the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. And now before that, were you saying all of them are God? Go uh, if we call them God, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Jesus answered them, is it not written on the law? I said, ye are God. So all of them are God. So basically, that's what yeah, 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 yeah. So he's not calling himself God. Yeah. And honestly speaking, you know yeah. here, right? Do you believe the Bible is the unchanged word of God? Nothing man-made has gone into it. There's no translational errors. There's no corruption. Because there are verses which is very unclear. Yeah? There are verses which contradict one another. Yeah. Yeah? Even now you're reading this, I'm right? Like, and it's not making a lot of sense. Yeah. And even in the Bible it says, um, God is not author of confusion. Mm. Yeah? So now, <laughs> let me tell me when you finish reading it, yeah. and I want to make some other points. Okay. But I don't want to rush it. You take okay. your time. Let's read it together. So ye of him the Father have sent your fire, and sent into the world very basilisk. Because I said I am the Son of God, if I do not, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do the Believe not me. Believe the works that ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore he sought again to take him, but he escaped out of the hand, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at the first baptized, and then he abide. And many resorted into him, and said, John did not miracle, but all things that John spoke of this man were true. And many believed on, on him. There. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and by the way, I asked you for a verse yeah. that shows And it proof. didn't show. No 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 it, it didn't show, thank you. That shows the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't show the Trinity. Yeah. So why believe in the Trinity? Because this categorically goes against the teachings of um, Abraham yeah of Jesus and Moses and Abraham the friend of God who was famous for being a monotheist believe in one God yeah where did Trinity come from and before you accidentally take my phone home with you <laughs> I've got my own <laughs> yeah better than mine anyways yeah. um, so my point is you haven't been able to show Trinity yeah. And now it's actually even affirming mm -hmm. that your belief that Jesus Christ isn't God. Yes? Yeah, I can affirm that. Pardon? Yeah, I can affirm that now and that reading it I kinda of understand it. It's quite it's confusing. Yeah. Because there's so many there's like a lot of translation and then when you read the King um, James one, it kind of like contradicts the new uh, because also remember there's there's new testament as well and then there's new there's old testament as well so the bible has just been yeah, yeah, translated yeah. a lot yeah. and then i don't know i think i don't know it's just confusing now i'm confused <laughs> that's fine let me let me help clarify that confusion right so <clears throat> the foundation is let's build step by step there's one god any doubt on that God created us. Yeah. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. Yeah. Now, there are verses in the Bible which Jesus Christ didn't know. When is the hour? He said, the sun doesn't know. Um, the angels don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know this verse, right? Jesus Christ was hungry. God is hungry. Jesus Christ is hungry. He's going to, I don't believe he's God, obviously. This is what Christians will say that Jesus Christ is God, which you don't believe, which I don't believe. Jesus Christ is hungry. He's going to the fig tree. He sees the fig tree, he's going towards the fig tree. So the context is given. Jesus Christ is hungry. He's a man, he's hungry, he's going to the fig tree, but there's no figs on the tree. If Jesus Christ is God, how can he not know there's no figs on the tree? More evidence that Jesus Christ isn't God. Because the argument, the belief is simple, yeah? Um, God cannot be um, divided from his attributes. So it can't be, this is 100% God, but sometimes God doesn't know. 
this is 100% God, but sometimes God isn't all powerful. Then no, God has names and attributes which we affirm and the uniquely God's, the uniquely His. Mm -hmm. And you can't separate God from His attributes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can't say, oh, no, 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 one day He's all powerful. <laughs> yeah? That that, huh? That creates a confusion because if one day God is this and then the next day is that, and that it's a, a lot of like, confusion, right? Yeah, so. exactly. So, um, so now that we've established clearly Jesus Christ isn't God, mm -hmm. um, we've established clearly the Trinity isn't in the Bible, and if Jesus Christ isn't God, then the Trinity is false as well. Yeah. Um, now I'm getting to Son of God. What do you mean by that? What is meant by that? You know the disciples who, disciples are referred to as children of God. David is referred to as a child of God. Yeah. Moses. Moses. Uh, David. <laughs> so it doesn't make anything make him more special. Yeah? Um, the the reason I don't like using the word father, I don't like using um, what's the word? The word son is because the Quran is clear. In chapter 112, Allah says, Kul hu Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalit wa lam yulat wa lam lakullahu kufwan ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. He is the eternal, the self sustaining. He did not beget, nor was he begotten. He doesn't have offspring, nor was he born. Yeah. There's nothing comparable to God. How do you feel about this four-line definition of God? Like it's much clearer. Like to understand that there's only like God is only Him. There's only God, and there's not this uh, other God. It's only Him, so it's much clearer to understand that. Not some God or Trinity, so yeah, it's more clear. It's more clear. Yeah. Do you disagree with this four line definition? Anything that meets this four line definition, I'll submit my will to it, I'll worship it. Yeah. Do you accept that this is a good four line definition of God? God is uniquely one, self sustaining, eternal. God is not in need of anything. No. Yeah, um, He doesn't have nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters. He doesn't have offspring, nor was he born, and there's nothing comparable to God. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Now, do you know much about the Quran? No, nothing at all, nothing. Okay. Now, <laughs> let me introduce you to the Quran. Yeah? Okay, beginner's guide. <laughs> this is the perfect, unchanged word of God. The Prophet Muhammad spoke Arabic. The Quran was preserved in Arabic. Yeah? Um, this is the month of Ramadan. There are people who are memorizing, um, who are reciting the Quran every day in mosques mm -hmm. from memory. Yeah? So we were able to perfectly preserve it. There's no contradiction in this Quran. Yeah? Allah says that Allah will protect this book. The Bible doesn't make that claim that it's going to be preserved. The Quran makes that claim and it has been preserved. Yeah? That's one of the miracles of it. Other miracles, the linguistic miracles. Mm -hmm. yeah? Um, it talks about history, gets it right. Yeah? You have to remember the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an illiterate man. Um, and how is it possible that he comes with a complete way of life? How is it possible this Prophet, um, who didn't know how to read or write, yeah? in his community he was known not to be able to read or write, he was known to be the most honest, trustworthy, comes with a revelation which blew the minds of the Arabs. Because yeah? you know, Every society, every community got specialisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Arabs, though very proud, they're very um, good with the language. Yeah. And the Quran blew it away because it's like it's on another level. The Quran actually sets challenges to people. Um, come with one chapter like this. Come with something like this, similar to it. No one has been able to meet the criteria or meet the challenge set by the Qur'an. Yeah. What's next? Um, every subject the Qur'an talks about is talks about with elegance and is, is a master of it. Why? Because this is from Allah. 
Allah is the expert of all subjects. Yeah? Um, in the Quran where it says there's um, a book where there's no doubt. Yeah? The Quran starts off with saying that this book has no doubts in it. Yeah? Everyone goes there's no corruption, there's no crookedness. Yeah? What else? What other book can be from God? We have in the Quran, um, in a museum, no, in a university in Birmingham, Arabic Quran, carbon dated in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Preservation in the languages revealed in. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying to yourself, yeah, if what I've said is correct, yeah, do you have any doubt this is from God? No. Yeah. I wouldn't have any doubt because it's clear that there's, there's only like God is nameless. You cannot have so much divine of definition of this God is this good Father, this and that. So yeah. yeah. Now, do you know much about the Prophet Muhammad? Not much. What do you know? Good or bad things? And don't, yeah, I'm glad. Good, good. good. Yeah, because you can't, don't worry, you can't offend me, right? <laughs> I want to like, because a lot of times we Google it and Islamophobic websites come up and stuff like that. It's all fabrication, does it make sense? And someone like me, I can rebuttle it and just finish them off quick. Yeah, alhamdulillah, by the permission of Allah, right? This man, um, like I said, um, he was respected in his community. 1400 years ago when the Quran was revealed, um, in his last sermon, what did he say? He said, no Arab is better than a non-Arab. No white man is better than a black man. He gave women's rights. He said the only thing that hires your ranks is your taqwa, your belief in Allah, in God. Yeah. Can you imagine? 1400 years ago, the man, the Prophet Muhammad, giving rights to women, giving rights to black people. Impossible. <laughs> Imagine. 1400 years. This is, we've, if you Google the last sermon of the Prophet, in the, when he was given, in Hajj, is a holy pilgrimage, um, he gave this um, speech sermon. So it's preserved. Yeah? And that's why if you look there, I don't look there, look around because you don't want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a black man, we've got a white man, we've got a brown guy, we've got all ethnicities coming together. Why? Because Islam doesn't uh, discriminate. Yeah. Islam is inclusive. Yeah. So he was a man who's giving rights to women. A man came to him and said, Who deserves my companionship? Yeah. He said, Your mother. He said, Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. Yeah. Who next? Your father. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, is hiring the ranks of women, of mothers. Yeah? Where in a time where the Greek philosophers and the Christian churches were discussing if women had souls. They were discussing about buying and selling women. Yeah? Because of the original sin and Adam being tricked into having the apple due to being coerced by Eve which Islam, we don't believe in this. Yeah? Um, and the reason I'm mentioning this is not to make this Christian look bad, but it's just to contextualize the time where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with this message. Yeah? Now, if you accept everything I've said to be true, yeah, and it makes sense to you, What's stopping you from leaving this conversation as someone who submits their will to God? You know, Abraham, Abraham prayed to God and he said, Oh God, make my children submitters to you. If I was to translate one of those words into Arabic, it would be, Oh God, make my children Muslim. Muslim means someone who submits their will to God. So what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim? Someone who submits their will to God, the one creator who created all of us. who have sent out a perfect book that was perfectly preserved to a perfect example to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad. As a non-Muslim, no one said nothing bad about the Prophet Muhammad to you. No one could criticize him, no one could undermine him. Yeah? 
It's because I'm surrounded like around like Islam as well, like my friends, so yeah. I've never really heard anything negative about like um did you capture it, capture what you're saying. <laughs> I said it's because like um, I'm surrounded like majority of my friends are like Muslim as well, so it's a mix. So I never really had like a, um, anything negative towards like um, Prophet Muhammad. So yeah, so like yeah, it's just. So yeah. I'm telling you, sister, what's yeah. stopping you <laughs> from leaving this conversation? Someone who's got the keys to paradise. Because the fact of the matter is. The article of faith, what you need to enter paradise, yeah, is the belief that there's only one God. Yeah? And worshipping God alone without making partners. Yeah? Now, once you have the correct belief, then leads to actions, which is the five pillars. Yeah? So belief, then it's praying five times a day. Yeah? Do you have an issue with praying five times a day? No. Yeah, um, you're someone who comes across spiritual. Normally, I have to defend it. Yeah, but I know I don't with yourself because you pray five times a day. When do you commit sins? Allah says it protects you from fashion, fascia, shameless behavior. Oh, I was gonna rob a bank. I was gonna commit adultery. When? I wake up, I pray. In the afternoon, I pray. Midday, I pray. In the evening, I pray. In the night, I pray. I don't have time to commit sins. And when I do, I'm gonna stand in front of my Lord and make me think like. Wait, why did I do this? Why am I planning this? I can't do this. Yeah. Thereafter is giving zakat. 2.5% of your wealth. 2.5% of your wealth. That's one fortieth of your money you haven't spent in one calendar year. Islam, Muslims, we eradicate poverty. There was no more poor people. Because zakat is a tax for the rich to give to the poor. Can you imagine? We, we eradicate poverty just by implementing the law from God, which is you give 2.5% of your money that you haven't spent in one calendar year. After you deducted money that you need, 140th, 2.5% of your wealth, there was no more poor people. It works. There's no other financial system that eradicated poverty. Yeah. This is factually, you can um, verify through history. Yeah, it's a documented fact. What's next? Fasting. Everyone this month, month of Ramadan, everyone's fasting. Yeah. Do you have an issue with fasting for 30 days? I don't have an issue because I've done fasting before. Yeah? So yeah. If you're too old, don't fast. Mm -hmm. Too young, don't fast. You're ill, don't fast. You're traveling, don't fast. Woman on her period, don't fast. We have to be clear with our language. A woman on her period. Yeah. We live in times, strange times. <laughs> yeah. A woman on her period, yeah. um, she doesn't need to fast. Yeah. So it's been made easy. Now, the fifth pillar is Hajj. Um, holy pilgrimage, where you um, go and visit a holy site where it was built by Abraham. Yeah. And you do acts of worship and so on and so forth, right? Um, if you can afford it, if you have your male guardian, if you're not too old, if you're not too ill. Yeah? So I'm saying, do any of the five pillars, um, do you have issues with any of the five pillars? No. Anything you're like, no, 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 we can't be doing this. <laughs> Stop that behavior. No, but I don't have, to be honest with you, I don't really have an issue with like, mainly I like, I always have a question in terms of fasting. Yeah, yeah, because I've done fasting before, but I've never done like 30 days of fasting. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't really have, in terms of giving back as well. I it's think easy peasy, it's lemon easy squeezy. To give. Naturally, you should be able to give to, um, as a, as a, as a someone that believe in a religion you're meant to be giving and sharing and also like I never my perspective of is Islam before it was more it was a little bit negative before because um, I didn't know that the woman empowerment was such a big deal when you mentioned about uh, Muhammad yeah. Prophet Muhammad so like so yeah so I, I didn't know that I thought it was more like men male dominated in a sense and then, yeah. 1400 years ago, when women didn't have any rights, yeah. the Prophet is saying that they can buy and sell and own their own lands. 
Yeah, they're saying that they can get out of the marriage contract by themselves. So there's no forced marriages. Um, so it gave a lot of rights to women. Yeah, divine rights to women. And the media portrays it in the wrong way. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Um, two thirds of them, right, is women embracing Islam. Why are the white Caucasian women in America, in the UK, um, Africans, Jamaicans, women embracing Islam? You tell me? Because they're in the West, but they've seen Islam actually give them rights rather than them having to kind of flaunt their beauty and be treated like an objects rather than actually free thinking human beings who've got the independent thoughts and who can actually make decisions by themselves. So, my soon-to-be sister <laughs> in Islam, what is stopping you from becoming a Muslim? There's nothing I've said nothing stopping me. <laughs> that you disagree with. What's preventing you from leaving this conversation mm -hmm. knowing that if you get hit by that double-decker bus, you're going to go to paradise. <laughs> yeah? yeah? And that's it. You, you know, I have a tradition on Easter weekend. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? Huh? Uh, speak to people coming out of the church and they become Muslim. Uh, every Easter weekend, I've had like one or two people become Muslim. Because the fact of the matter is, you're trying to connect with God. Yeah. Yeah? And I've come with the pure message from God, and then it touches the heart. There's nothing I've said that you disagree with. You know, fasting for 30 days, even now, science has shown that it's actually it's healthy. It's very healthy. It actually kills cancerous cells. It's a beautiful kind of detox for the system. That's not why I fast. That's the benefit I get. Does it make sense? Praying five times a day, there's a lot of science behind um, putting your forehead to the ground. Um, even this whole COVID thing, like Muslims, we pray, we wash our hands five times a day. Do you know what I mean? So there are a lot of side effects or um, unplanned benefits that we don't even know, but we're benefiting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he sleep on his right hand side. It's sunnah, as in the way shown by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I sleep on my right hand side. And now science shows that it's actually healthier for your heart. Because then it rests through the night. If you slept yeah, in the different. I don't smoke, so like the smoke. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take the conversation yeah. somewhere else. So the smoke just irritated me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. Similarly. <laughs> can I have my camera man please? Can you can you fix my camera? The sister doesn't want to be she doesn't want to be in the smell of the smoke. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah, so just just keep her out of the camera because I don't think she wants to be, oh, in, the don't want to be in the camera. She doesn't want to be in the camera. Sorry, no. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I'm not yeah. a cameraman, by the way. But he's, not, he's, not, he's not a cameraman. He's not a cameraman. So, sister, my question to yourself is why delay the good? Why not live and submit your will to the perfect way shown by God Almighty that's revealed by God? So, what's stopping you from leaving this conversation as a Muslim and then you're going to read the Quran you're going to speak to your Muslim friends you're going to research into Islam and actually verify everything I've said is 100% the truth yeah. yeah everything I've said is innate I haven't said nothing which you don't already know to be true because you know it to be true in your heart and the Muslims around you are practicing the same thing that I'm teaching yeah. so What's stopping you from getting the keys to paradise? Nothing's stopping me. Yeah. So would you be willing to say the Shahada and then become a Muslim and get all your sins forgiven and get entered into Jannah, What's shahada, into paradise? Bro? What's the Shahada, bro? Yeah. We're going to get there. Okay. Can I explain? Yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking about the five pillars. Yeah. The first one I said belief. Mm -hmm. Shahada translates into the testimony. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the testimony of the tongue of the belief you have in the heart. You have the belief of a Muslim in your heart. You need to testify in Arabic, yeah, which I'm going to say you repeat after me. Yeah. 
Then the NG. You don't don't worry about it. It's not it's not. It's very simple, right? Um, and then it's the actions of the limbs. So you know, the first one is I was going through the five pillars. The first one is the belief in the heart. The rest of them lead into actions of the limb, praying five times a day, yeah. giving zakat, fasting in the month of Ramadan, doing holy pilgrimage, hajj. Yeah. So, are you ready to become a Muslim? Yeah, yeah? you're ready? Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, so if you repeat it after me, yeah? Um, Ashadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha. Illallah, Allah. Washadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasulu I bear witness that there is no God Deity worthy of worship Except Allah And I bear witness The Prophet Muhammad Is the messenger sent by Allah That testimony sister is insufficient to enter you into paradise. All of your past sins have been forgiven. Right now, you start a new mashallah tabarakallah. And yeah, it's the best thing you could have ever done. Alhamdulillah. Now, like I said, if you, I'm gonna um, take some deals from yourself and give you deals of other sisters, and you can start the journey. How, how do you feel now that you've taken the shahada, sister? Good. <laughs> you feel good, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Describe it because a lot of people, I've, I've had people who've taken yeah. the Shahada and um, it's curious to know, like, yeah. and in your own words. Yeah. I don't want to put words into your mouth. <laughs> no, do you know what? I It's just something that I feel like it's just needed for me to kind of like do something for my own belief and make the right choice for myself rather than to actually um, just follow any like religion based growing into um yeah so i just feel like it was needed for me to walk it was a it wasn't my own fate but it was by you know permission, God's of, God. Fate, permission yeah. of god so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm grateful that i was able to walk this way and then to make the decision Indeed. yeah because the fact of the matter is like you yeah. said decision plan of god yeah Allah, yeah um, this isn't by chance mm -hmm. yeah Allah, Allah decreed, Allah willed for you to have this conversation for you, for us to like run into one another. Yeah, Allah chose you to be like, look, look at the, you know, it's you, you pointing out the idiocy and the silliness of people's behavior, yeah. and internally, you know, that look, there's something pure, there's something that's not quite right in what they're doing. I need to connect with my creator, mm -hmm. and you've been susceptible to the message. Yeah, yeah. there's no coercion, he wasn't forced into it, and Alhamdulillah. So, what I'm going to do now, my dear sister, I'm going to give you a few contact numbers okay. and they're going to get in touch with you. Yeah. Have you got the new mushroom guy in there? No, no, no. Okay. How are you doing, sister? Good, good. Do, do you have any questions for me? Alhamdulillah. Um, so, like, I think. I'm not really much of a. <laughs> I don't really ask much questions. But, like, so in terms of, like, prayer and stuff, like, yeah. um, you said about like you need to be praying five times yeah. and how are you supposed to know like when to like do the prayers and stuff like yeah. you know? so we we follow a solar calendar right okay so um, it's based on um, the sun okay. yeah so we're not worshiping the sun we're using the sun to tell the time mm -hmm. yeah so um to answer your question very simply we have a timetable yeah, okay <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> there, 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 there's an app, yeah. right? So you can down, you can download the app, mm -hmm. right? And then, um, for example, I'll show you. So look, I've got the timetable on my front screen. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so there's another app. Mm -hmm. Fajr, the first prayer, right? Yeah. It's early in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it starts at 4:46. Mm -hmm. It needs to be prayed before sunrise. So that's 18 past six. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you pray the afternoon prayer after um, eight minutes past one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you've got the midday prayer that you can pray uh, at 4.43. Mm -hmm. This prayer needs to be done before Maghrib, which is the evening, the night prayer, okay. or the evening prayer, let's just say, mm -hmm. at 7.46. This is the time we're gonna be opening our fast. Okay. So after I've made our fast mm -hmm. before this time, yeah. 
and opening at this time, right? But again, and then the night prayer you pray at four past, yeah? And the, the time changes throughout the year. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the, one of the beauties is um, you be fast, like, like now, the fast is slightly longer, yeah? Um, as the time goes on, the challenge uh, changes by 10 days, it moves forward. So then the, if you live for 33 years, you're fasted for the whole every day of the year. Like you've experienced fasting in the winter. Now we're kind of semi-fasting in the summer or spring. That makes sense. Um, so you have a timetable and you follow the timetable. Because you're a new Muslim, there isn't a, like you learn and you go at your own pace. Okay? As a believer, as soon as you become Muslim, um, there are things which is mandatory on you. So prayer is one of them. Yeah. Um, but I've been a Sufi. I'd have people in my house, in my living room so far, become Muslim when I say you have to pray five times a day. Like, you know, I was going through the five pillars. Yeah. I went through the first pillar, he's like, I want to become Muslim. Mm -hmm. I go, like, okay, like, that's a bit. Why? He goes, look, being a Christian, praying once a week is not enough. I need that connection with God five times a day. Yeah. You know so you can do other acts of worship. But when it comes to five daily prayers, there's set times, there's windows which I've gone through. And again, I'll put you in touch with people who actually go through it with you. Um, if you're ready, if you feel comfortable, you can start fasting from tomorrow. That makes sense. Um, one of the things you can do when you get home is just like wash yourself from head to toe. You know what I mean? Because as Muslims, there's a certain amount of purity we need to do. But all of these things, I don't want to scare you. Yeah, It's step by step and I'm going to surround you with so many sisters yeah, who will support you through these things, you know what I mean? Um, any other questions to start? Huh. Yeah. I can actually call you sister now. <laughs> yes, you can sense? call me sister. And yeah. my apologies if I was standing a bit close to you. Yeah. Um, it's just, I know there's a lot of noise there yeah. and I wanted to capture the audio. Okay. So my apologies if I invaded your space because I feel like it's going to be on camera and it's like, this brother, what's he doing? <laughs> getting in that sister's space here yeah. so I just thought I'd give the explanation so forgive me for that yes um, but yeah do you have a good network of Muslim friends um, yes they're gonna be very proud like, of you by the way <laughs> yes especially one of my my team leader he's a Muslim so he's gonna be proud of me and yes. I call him my brother as well which is interesting so yeah he's okay. gonna be very proud of me so, so yeah we're gonna we're gonna hook you up with the sisters get you some iftar as well mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, let me let me give you some numbers as well. This yeah. is for you, by the way. Thank you. So here, yeah. um, we've got the Quran. Yeah, um, we've got other things about mon um, monotheism and the oneness of God. Books on that, basics, guides to um, Islam, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this is for you. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even catch your name, but <laughs> it's on camera, so I'm gonna. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Read one. Sorry? Ridwan. Ridwan, okay. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, you've, you've helped me to maintain my tradition of someone becoming Muslim every weekend. Even now, you see this brother here? Yeah. He actually took the Shahada a couple of weekends ago. Okay. Yeah. And he's just enjoying fasting, he's enjoying praying. And we've been talking to one another and he said his biggest regret is he didn't embrace Islam sooner. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think he'll mind. I'll show you our conversation. Um, again, he's just talking to him about fasting and how to do the early prayers and how to maintain that. You know what I mean, because it's all a system, new to the system. Um, this is the video of him taking the Shahada. I sent it to him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll show it to you. So literally, you can see the background. <laughs> this is him becoming Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the brother actually. This is a, like a week after he took his shahada. By the color of Allah, he was actually traveling to Turkey. So he's there. And this made me tear up. He's he sent me a picture from the mosque. And this is like within a week of him being a Muslim. You know what I mean? So it's a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, so let me give you this number. Um, she's a reaver herself from Croatia. Yeah. It was 
the name of it? You can save as Ella. E L A. Ella? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to drop her a text message? Oh, should I drop her a text message? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm getting emotional myself. <laughs> I've got, yeah, so... Yeah, so here. What do I say? Hi. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't know what to say now. I'm open. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, uh, hi. I look forward to talking to you about Islam soon. And whatever, she's like an information point. So she wouldn't be like, oh, how do I pray? How do I... Um, have a gusel, what does gusel mean, okay. anything. And even this guy, like he messages me and he's always like, oh, sorry for disturbing you. And the thing that you don't realize, it's not disturbing, like I get um, honored. I feel like, because the thing is, if we're able to teach you something good, yeah, we'll get the reward for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, anything you want to ask, anything else, sister? So, yeah, yeah. I got I got a few senior brothers who got more knowledge than me. Yeah. But if you don't have any questions, or you yeah. want to just ask some questions, I got a few Riva brothers. You want to ask them any questions, or anything? I don't have any questions at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I need to ponder. So yeah, yeah. I'm made the right decision, and then yeah. Alhamdulillah, so, yeah. may Allah bless you, and yeah, keep in touch with that sister. Yeah. And we're here every Saturdays. Yeah. So to be continued. Thank you yeah. so much. May Allah bless you. Uh, evening now, right? It's not afternoon anymore, so I can't say afternoon. Yeah. So have a wonderful evening. Yes, yeah. evening. Yeah, right? close to evening. Close yeah. to evening. So, yeah. Forty minutes away. And then thank you so much. Thank Nothing. you. You've honoured me, and may Allah and remember us in your prayers, by the way, because you know, Always. like I said, um, because you've just become Muslim, all of your past sins are forgiven. You've literally sinned through right now. You're actually probably more sin free than all of us you're closer to god right now um so take this opportunity to pray for us pray for your family um what a lot of the conversations we have is new muslims when like how are their family going to feel about yeah. it what the challenges in regards to that yeah. um, i'm going to answer that question once i've blown my nose because <laughs> this is england and the weather keeps changing one, one, one minute is hot, one minute is cold. I mean, so I would say, sister, once you're actively gaining knowledge, um, it's up to you how and when you choose to share with anyone this information. Yeah, I would say actively gain knowledge when you're ready, uh, then have with knowledge, then have that conversation with family members. Because right now, you being a Muslim, you don't need to tell anyone. Yeah. Uh, and once you've got knowledge, you can actually invite friends and family. Because what's I'm gonna, and what I say to most people is, through you, five people are going to become Muslims. Your immediate family, um, your friends. Because what ends up happening is sometimes it's hard for us to have that conversation with family members because they remember us when we were non-Muslims. They remember us when we were young and misbehaved. Um, so it's a personal thing that when you're ready to have that conversation with your family members you can and again we're very welcoming so if you've got family members who've got questions or anything they want to understand they can have that conversation with us as well um, but the main thing is people will be interested in Islam through your actions when you're behaving a certain way you're respectful and you're following what Islam teaches, everyone's gonna be like, I want what she's got. I wanna be your point. When they see how Islam has benefited you and how it's made you happy, they're gonna to wanna to be part of that. So don't burden yourself in regards, okay, how do I portray the Islam, the message of Islam right now? It's like, how do you bring it into your life? And then you'll notice that by default, people are gonna want a piece of it. Yeah? Um, I didn't ask about friends and family. But, yeah, I, like I said, you know, um, once I had two people take the Shahada, and it's like I speak to one mom, and then 
like you just the thing is once you're in your gain your knowledge got that connection with God things are gonna fall into place so don't worry about it Shana. any questions anything else yeah just okay so I know that obviously there's certain foods like when you become you know a Muslim yeah so like you, there's certain food that you're not supposed to eat so obviously that Question. So, in the Quran, chapter five, um, it goes through the list of food which is forbidden. Right? Um, so we can't eat food that was killed in any name apart from Allah. We can't eat any food, food or animals that was killed in other than Allah's name. Yeah. So. Um, religious food from other religions and so on and so forth right? sacrificing another deity's name so what you can do there are shops that sell like halal food halal meat uh, so at the moment the best thing for you would be uh, just to be mindful where you're getting your food from because there's for religious reasons and even science is showing that there's a connection between uh, our mindset, our behavior based on what we eat and in Islam halal food is like uh, food that's been sacrificed in the name of Allah there's no uh, animals was not actually suffering through the process um, like we have to make sure there's criteria like oh was there did they sacrifice did they kill one animal in front of another animal was the knife sharp um, we sacrifice animals in the way that's the least harmful and least painful for them and we drain the blood I mean so there's less blood from viruses and so on and so forth um, so yeah um, and again as you go through your journey you know about how um, alcohol is forbidden I don't drink anyways <laughs> yeah? I can't imagine so there are things where it's like the behaviors that make you sinful but it doesn't um, cut you out of the fall of Islam so if there was say, somebody and they continue drinking you don't drink someone drank it wouldn't make them a non-muslim it just means that they're not doing as much as they should be doing to connect with God does that make sense um, a lot of the other things that come up in regards to the dress code for women um, again that's a personal journey you know I went through the five pillars did I talk about the dress code no no because in the hierarchy of things, the most important are the five pillars. Then you've got the articles of faith, and there are six articles of faith. So, belief in Allah, um, belief in Judgment Day, and that good and bad is from Allah, belief in the angels, yeah? belief in the prophets, and the books that came from the prophets. Yeah? Uh, the, these are fundamentals. Now, as you go through your journey, I'm like, look, dressed like Mother Mary. You can't show me a single picture of Mary with her hair out or in a bikini. Yeah, she dressed better, modestly. Even nuns in the church, how did they dress? Modestly. Yeah. So again, okay, I'm not going to judge you and say, look, it's your, your new Muslim, it's your journey, but it's not going to ask, it's not going to cut you out of the fold of Islam. Yeah. It's a better way to connect with God, get more reward and follow the commandments of God. I'm not belittling the law of God. Does that make sense? Because as Muslims, that's what we do. We submit to God. Does that make sense? There's many things I might want to follow my whims and fancies and desires, but long term, submitting to God will make me happy. Yeah? Any other questions? Anything else? Yeah? Now it's purple, my dear sister. May Allah bless you. Um, I pray that Allah keeps you steadfast and blesses you, blesses your family with Hidayat. Hidayat means guidance, um, and all of us with guidance and Hidayat. And yeah, I'm going to leave you to it. Yeah? Thank you so much for your time. You take care. Thank you so much. Asalaamu Alaikum. <laughs>